Glitch Productions, one of the most well-known production studios for indie animation on the internet, creating classics such as The Amazing Digital Circus and Murder Drones. With Murder Drones Episode 7 just releasing and causing a huge ruckus in the community, along with The Amazing Digital Circus still thriving with hundreds of millions of views, it's hard to see some of Glitch's past productions. I'm talking about one of the first shows that Glitch Productions ever made, although they only made four that I know of. I'm talking about Meta Run- Uh, what- what's- Meta Runners, one of Glitch Productions' least well-known indie series. Despite the series being really well written and well made, it doesn't get enough attention so I'm going to be reviewing it today. Now if you've watched any of my past reviewing videos on anything really, which I do recommend that you go check out if you haven't seen already, you know that I rate it in five different categories. Once in animation, once in characters, once in plot, once in comedy, and then again overall. However, this show is different because this is actually done and there are three seasons with like 10 episodes at least per season. I don't know, I didn't count. So instead of rating it in four different categories and then averaging the scores, I'm gonna go through the entire show and then just rate it at the end. I'll talk about things I like, things I don't like, things that went well, things that didn't go well, and overall just the entire show as it is. Now if it isn't obvious to you, this video does include spoilers for the entire series, so I highly suggest that you go watch the series. It's very underrated, which is why I'm making this video in the first place, and you should definitely go watch it. Anyway, let's get to the first season. Get a few flashes of some sort of backstory and get to see a girl waking up in a lab with something sticking in her arm. This girl's name is Tari and the main character of the entire show. One of her arms is missing with a mechanical arm and hand replacing it. She has no memory of where she came from or who she is and she stumbles out of the room. Now in this world, video games are basically everything with the top of the food chain for video games being meta runners. Basically, you have to be good at video games in order to succeed at life, with top players such as meta runners replacing their entire Entire arm just to get a few extra CPS. As Tari stumbles through the streets, she attracts a lot of attention, this being because she has a meta runner arm, which is pretty rare to have. She gets away from all this attention by running into a building that has the label TazCorp on it. And there she finds a speedrunner with an entire crowd behind her trying to speedrun a sort of platformer game and failing. As everyone leaves disappointed, along with the meta runner leaving very angry, she picks up the controller and tries to play. The meta runner, whose name is Belle, sees that she's trying to play and makes fun of her because she's not doing too well. That is, until she actually starts doing really well. Despite never even playing the game, she starts doing some crazy tricks and movements in the game. Her meta runner armor lights up and she is somehow warped into the game. This is where she meets Theo, one of the other main characters of the show. The two become friends and they are completing a level when they are interrupted by Lux, the main antagonist for season 1 and 2. Lux starts hurting Tari trying to figure out how she's warped into the game, accidentally bringing her out of the game forcefully, along with somehow Theo. This is where the first episode ends, and I have a lot to say about just this one episode, along with a few things to say about the entire season. For one thing, Theo is like really annoying in the first season of Meta Runners. Like I get that he's basically like six months old according to Google, but like he is so annoying. At least in the first season, he gets better in the later seasons. Now although the animation isn't the best, especially compared to later in the show, it's still pretty decent especially since you're animating humans. Now the reason why Glitch Productions doesn't exactly like animating humans humans is because humans are very expensive to animate. They're just harder to animate than like robots or random colorful circus characters. So the fact that they are animating humans along with this is like their first official show, it's pretty good. Now I know what you're thinking. If I were to summarize the rest of season one, this is going to be a very long video. So I'll try to summarize it as fast as I can. Tari and Theo run away eventually with Tari getting captured and Theo not knowing what to do, however being picked up by a mysterious person. This mysterious person's name being Lamar and another main character of the show. Lamar rescues Tari and Theo and takes them away to a secret hideout to meet his friends Sophia and Masa. They accidentally found out about Tari's warping abilities while spying on Lux, who they all hate for multiple different reasons. Tari, after proving her worth, is able to join a team and is informed about a sort of planet that would try to take down Lux. A server event is coming up and if they are able to crash the game during the server event, they will be able to go into the servers of the company and release all the secret information that would get the company in a lot of trouble, which would put Lux behind bars. However, they were never able to do this because in order to crash the game, you have to perform a very specific glitch that is basically impossible to do unless you were able to warp into the game and have like cool AI 
learning technology stuff in your brain. And what do you know it? Tari is able to perform this glitch. So after a bit of practicing, they enter the server or game competition and are able to successfully pull off the glitch and get all the server secret data. However, they are stopped by Lux before they can walk out and release all the data. Lux holds Masa, Tari, Theo, and Lamar all hostage while trying to convince Sophia to come out and save them by giving up the server data. Sophia does eventually crumble and gives up the server data she backed up on her tablet or whatever. The information on it is all wiped and it is supposedly over. It is then revealed that Masa used to work for Lux as a meta runner. Oh, and Masa's arm gets ripped off. They are all about to be taken up as prisoners before Ari starts negotiating. She makes a deal that she will be Lux's meta runner and won't even complain as long as her friends are able to leave unscathed. Lux agrees to this deal, but not before he basically just kills Theo and locks him up in his game cartridge, or the game file that he originally came from. And then season 1 ends. Now overall, season 1 is actually a pretty good start off to the show. It has some great character development, it gives some good insights to characters, and does a lot of world building for as little as there is in this show. Now I forgot to mention this before, but Bella does get a bit of insight. However, she gets more insight into season 2, so I'll go more into that when I talk about season 2. Animation is decent, especially if you're animating humans. The character development is pretty decent, however you get more of that later in the show, so whatever. Overall, good start off to the show. Don't have a lot to complain about, just not a lot of big world building like what the world is dealing with and stuff like that. However, you can't really expect that much from like a first season of a show that like an inexperienced production company is making. If you're enjoying the video so far, make sure you subscribe, it can really help me out and I'm trying to get to 700 subs, even though it's not that big of a deal and I'm not getting monetized yet, however, it's still be pretty cool, thanks. Anyway, on to season 2. Season 2 starts off with a few scenes of Tari being a meta runner for Tazcorp or for Lux. Tari and Theo do get to see each other, however, it is not that often, and Tari is obviously getting fed up with what Lux is doing. We cut to what Lamar and Sophia are doing, which is trying to find Masa, who apparently abandoned them right after they left the arena or where they were doing the gaming competition in the previous season. Now, I'm pretty sure we don't get to see when Masa abandoned Sophia and Lamar, however, I think it would have been better if we actually were to see this at the end of Season 1 or as a flash flashback for season 2, because it gives more insight into what Masa is as a character. Anyway, we find Masa absolutely destroying someone in a 1v1 video game with only one arm, considering that his other arm is now gone. Lamar and Sophia confront Masa, telling him that they have a plan to get Tari out of Lux's control. However, before they do this, they need to get Masa a new meta runner arm, which costs a lot of money, and none of them actually have a lot of money. So they go to a dealer named Marco, who Sophia has a lot of history around. Now before I get into that, I do need to tell you more about Belle. Now, I forgot to mention this, but Belle has a friend, or used to have a friend, named Lucinia, whose name is shouted by Belle more times than Finn does with Rey's name in Star Wars. Belle has a sort of side arc trying to figure out what happened to Lucinia, which is still a mystery. Anyway, with that out of the way, let me continue with this Marco stuff. Now, Marco is a sort of dealer that has meta runner arms. Masa and Lamar challenge him to a game of Turbo Crash, or just another 1v1 game in general in this universe, to win a meta runner arm. They do end up winning, but not after Masa starts cheating when the same Enabling Marco's own meta runner arms. However, they now have a meta runner arm and continue with the plan of trying to contact Tari in order to inform her of the plan. Now, Tari has been sort of forming a sort of friendship with Belle and is able to get a phone from a sort of security guard or scientist or whoever this is. On this phone, she finds a anime dating simulator. Never wanted to talk about this on this channel. However, she tries to contact Lamar through this app because she knows that Lamar has this app because Lamar is a suck up for anime. Anime. However, she is able to do this only because of her friendship with Belle, who let her keep the phone. We are also introduced to a new character named Evelyn, who I absolutely hate. Now, I know you're supposed to hate characters like Evelyn, like there are characters from different books and movies and TV shows that are supposed to be hated. However, Evelyn is just on a different level. Evelyn is spoiled and never probably had to work a day in her life, despite her having an evil monologue and like the finale, but nobody really cares about that part. It just seems that she always gets everything that she wants, and also she like does the average annoying character trope of just annoying the main character. So props to the writing team. I mean, the character is well written, maybe not the depth of the character, just how annoying the character is, and it kind of just makes you want- <laughs> 
Anyway, let's move on to the rest of the season. Ari, after raising up an anime girl, is able to contact Lamar. She is informed of the plan, along with being able to get Belle trusted by Masa, which takes a bit of convincing, and get her into the plan to get Theo out of prison. Oh yeah, and Belle finds out that Lucinia, Belle's friend, was actually found by Lux and was just kept a secret. So, yay, redemption art! Anyway, the plan sort of goes like this. Hari and Evelyn have a sort of gaming showdown with other random people coming up soon, which is a perfect time to sabotage and get Tari out of there along with Theo. Although the plan goes a bit south, they are able to pull it off and Tari and Theo are able to get out of there. Now this does include Masa, Sophia, and Belle getting captured, and Belle wasn't explicitly showed to be captured, which probably should have been shown in one of my criticisms of this finale, but whatever. However, in the end, Lux's information, or just information of the company and the secrets that the company holds are released to the public, causing the police to eventually go after Lux. Lux starts taunting, and Masa gets kind of mad, so he pulls out a gun and almost shoots Lux. However, his friends convince him not to do so. However, big surprise, some sort of hacking chip has been placed on his Meta Runner arm, just so happens to be holding the gun, and he is forced to shoot Lux. They are now all wanted for questioning, and probably going to get charged for murder, because this world apparently doesn't know how to deal with corruption. Mel stays behind with Masa, who is too shell-shocked to move, because apparently she doesn't want to leave Masa again, or something. Kind of stupid, not gonna- Ari, Lamar, Theo, and Sophia go running off and almost get cornered, however they were picked up by Marco, and Season 2 ends. Now you can probably tell by the clips I've been showing on screen, Season 2's animation has taken a huge step up. In my opinion, this is probably the best season out of the three seasons of Meta Runners, so I guess that says a bit. There are a few things that are apparently happened off-screen, and I do wish they did happen on-screen, but animation does require you to cut some corners, so I kind of understand. Theo is way less annoying in this season, which is a lifesaver for his character. We get a bit of a deeper look into what Masa is as a character, and we also get to just get more character development in general for all the characters, except for Lamar, which I may get into in the end of the video. A pretty decent season overall to follow season 1, few problems, but they're not too bad. Anyway, let's get on to season 3. I do have to mention what happens at the end of season 2 before I go into season 3. Evelyn is stumbling around when she accidentally runs into a scientist with half his face blown off. The scientist is revealed to be the creator of Tari, a AI learning program that has the ability to master any video game it is used on along with warping the user into the video game. Season 3, we start off with Tari, Theo, Lamar, and Sophia locked up in Marco's cages, with their many escape attempts failing miserably. To try to gain back their freedom, they challenge Marco to a one-on-one -on -one in Turbo Crash, the game that Masa cheated in earlier. Tari warps into the game, however, something interferes with her connection, and she is warped into a different server. We cut to Masa and Belle stuck in an interrogation room, apparently surprised that they aren't in jail because the last thing they remember was being captured by the police. They are then introduced to Sheridan, the main antagonist for season 3, along with the same scientist who created Tari. Now he's captured Tari in order to put all her data back into Lucinia, Belle's friend. Because back in the explosion we get to see hints of in season 1, we get to realize that part of Lucinia is now technically part of Tari, or the learning program AI. So Sheridan wants to tear apart Tari in order to restore Lucinia, or his first test subject. His whole Sheridan Corp idea is basically just copying Lux, except he convinces himself that he's better. He wants to form his own team of meta runners in order to dominate the world or whatever. So he captures Tari and starts tearing her apart, trying to give her parts to Lucinia. And let me just say, that sounds way worse than it actually is. Theo is somehow able to get into these servers, however, and save Tari. However, it ends up that Tari has to sacrifice herself to make sure that Theo gets back to their friends and tells them what's happening. She is chased down by Evelyn, stabbed, and thrown into a different video game somehow. Now I do say somehow because we actually never get an explanation on how she was able to jump from Sheridan servers to a video game server. Don't really know how that works, but okay. It is here where we are introduced to a new game called Skybreakers. She is saved by an NPC and is trained on how to play the video game in order to get away from Evelyn who is still chasing her down. However, she can't rely on her AI learning abilities because those are being severely dampened or completely blocked because they are all given to, or at least mostly given to, 
through Lucinia. You know, back when that whole needle and head thing was going on. Now, I do find this a bit weird because Lucinia and Tari did have a conversation in Season 2, which I forgot to mention, but if you watch the series, you would probably know. And although Lucinia didn't really seem like herself, it did seem weird that she was just completely nice and now she's hostile. Oh wait, that's kind of like spoilers. In a way, after Tari is able to complete the tutorial, she escapes from Evelyn and gets into the actual servers. And there she meets up with Theo, Lamar, and Marco, and Marco is tagging along because he still has beef with Masa, who cheated way back in Season 2 in that Turbo Crash game. They are able to get Tari away from Evelyn and go off to try to get Tari more stacked up in gear. While all of this is happening, Sheridan is trying to convince Belle and Masa to join him, whether forcefully or unforcefully, and it ends up being forcefully. This is where we really get to see insight in Masa's character, which is probably the most character developed character in this entire series. Basically, he goes through a lot of trauma, and if you know anything about writing it, giving characters trauma basically just gives them development. Sheridan is somehow able to control Belle and and Masa's minds in order to make them work for him, and oh no, what are they ever going to do? It's not like you're gonna have to watch the rest of this video and find out, or you could just go watch the series if you haven't already. Why have you made it this far in the video? Why haven't you watched the series? Tari and her crew make it to the central area of the video game where they can stack up and rest. However, Evelyn and Lucinia are still after them. Despite this area being a non-PVP zone, they are still able to kill players, which gets the attention of the admins, who I thought were actually gonna be useful. However, they are just easily killed. Now, I do have a problem with this because the admins I feel like would be like all powerful in the video game but it kind of just looks like they're just random people that were able to like do commands in the video game. I really think there could have been a really interesting plot point with this. However, it was just wasted in the idea that they could just cover up a plot hole. Harry and her friends narrowly escape Evelyn and Lucinia and go to try find the access point in which Sheridan is allowing all this cheating stuff to happen. They are able to find this access point, they are able to get to Sheridan's servers and able to take everything down. However, when they are trying to get to the access point, Evelyn and Lucinia catch up, which causes Lamar to sacrifice himself in order to slow them down. Lamar then finds himself inside of Sheridan's servers, inside the actual servers, just like Tari. Along with a few other random people, Sheridan then reveals that his big plan is to warp everyone into a video game, at least everyone with a certain type of meta runner arm. These people are his test run in order to make sure that the servers are stress proof. Basically, he makes everyone kill each other in order to make sure that the servers can actually handle it, which is pretty messed up. Lamar is able to make his way back into Skybreakers and find his way back to Tari, Theo, and Marco. At the access point, Tari, Theo, and Marco fight Evelyn and Lucinia, along with Masa and Belle, who have been brainwashed and are fighting against them. I should also mention that Theo is slowly glitching out of existence because he hasn't been to his own game cartridge or game file for a while now. This causes him to be very unstable, which affects his fighting skill. He eventually is killed by Evelyn. Oh no, I'm so sad. Oh no, they killed Zubal. Anyway, you guys wanna go get something to eat? Yeah, I'm gonna talk about Theo's death isn't exactly that emotionally impacting, at least emotionally impacting for me, because he's already like fake died like a lot of times, and so I didn't really feel too much when he did supposedly actually die. It just wasn't that emotionally impacting for me. I was kind of just like, finally, they actually killed him for once, and they didn't actually even kill him. Anyway, Theo and Marco both end up dying, or Marco just gets sent back to Shipwreck Swamp, the tutorial area, but that's basically just as good as dead in the video game, along with Lamar. This then leaves Tari to clutch up, however she obviously doesn't because it is literally a 1v4. However, her emotional speech was able to snap Masa out of his brainwashed trance thing. He is able to snap out of it and literally wake up in the real world instead of in-game. Well, uh, in-game too, but like most importantly in real life, and is able to stop Sheridan from brainwashing Bell anymore, along with himself. He does the badass move of pinning Sheridan up against a wall by his throat, which honestly, this is like my favorite scene of the entire show, it's pretty cool. His levels of, and I'm not making this up, free will are so powerful, it explodes the brainwashing chip he has on his head, and uh, he gets knocked out, and his arm falls off or something. This also causes Bell to wake up from her brainwashing thing, and it helped Hari fight Evelyn and Lucinia. She ends up sacrificing herself to stab Lucinia, returning all the AI learning stuff to Tari. This causes Tari to finally have the skill to 185 full piece Evelyn and win the battle. She then tricks Lucinia into jumping into the access point with her, and then we enter the finale of the entire show. We get this cool epic hacking battle along with a actual battle between Tari and Lucinia and Sophia and Sheridan. During all of this, however, Marco has been tracking down Sheridan in order to try to 
to destroy his servers physically. He does this because a lot of his men are being taken over forcefully by the AI warping into video game stuff, which has been happening throughout the last few episodes. Not just a few people, I mean like the entire world. Sophia ends up losing the hacking battle to Sheridan, which causes Sheridan to celebrate. However, Sophia tells him that Marco is literally coming for him in the real world and he needs to be scared. He runs away only to be killed by Marco. The servers are destroyed. However, Tari is still inside the servers. Tari ends up saving Lucinia by sacrificing herself and returning all the brain pieces and whatever to Lucinia so she can wake up in the real world. Tari's friends are now sad because, well, Tari just sacrificed herself and now she's like basically dead. Oh yeah, and Belle and Lucinia are gay. However, Tari was able to create basically her own server and was able to somehow get back Theo. Like I said, his deaths are never meaningful. So it's sort of a melancholy end. It's still a good end, it's just maybe not the right end for this show. Now I'm not saying that melancholy ends such as this one are bad in general. They can really work well with a certain show. However, this show sort of doesn't really feel right when you end it with like a very melancholy ending. It was like Murder Drones would be fine having a melancholy ending because they're generally more adult. This show seems more like not, at least not as adult as like Murder Drones. You could argue that Meta Runners does address some pretty serious topics like death and guilt and like imposter syndrome and stuff, but Murder Drones also covers like cannibalism and mass genocide, so really think about which one's more adult. But overall, the show is really underrated. For the first show that Glitch Productions ever made, it's really good and definitely check it out, which I don't know why I'm still telling you because you should have watched the show. Go watch the show if you haven't already. Why have you made it this far in the video? Go watch the show. Animation is great, especially since you're animating humans. Season 3 was a bit rushed because Murder Drone had just got its like pilot, I think, released, so they were also rushing to get this over with so they could work on Murder Drones. Overall, the show's really good, 9.3 out of 10, a passing grade in A. Few cons I have with it, however, it doesn't outweigh the entire show too much, so pretty decent score and a really good show, definitely worth a rewatch. Now, hey, if you stuck around this long into the video, I think you'll definitely like my other content because it's definitely shorter. Also, I make a lot of Murder Drones content, or did make a lot of Murder Drones content, so definitely go check that out if you like Murder Drones. I make a lot of things about indie animation, so if you like indie animation, like I said, earlier, please consider subscribing and like the video if you actually liked it. Comment down below anything I missed or if I'm completely wrong about this review. Stay tuned and I'll see you next time. We can do? We're just stuck in this limbo?